Hi everyone, welcome to Ella 3320 Children's Literature. Uh, this is a short video um, to talk about some of the reasons and purposes for sharing children's books. We're going to go through four different reasons and purposes for sharing children's books and then we'll actually look at some of these books when we're together in class. So the first reason that it's important to share children's books um, is the idea of entertainment. Um, we want our students, because remember our goal in this class is to create lifelong or lifetime readers, we want them to understand that reading can be entertaining, that it's a fun endeavor. So when we think about that, um, there's several um, different kinds of books that we can include um, or that we can turn to for entertainment purposes with children. The first kind are books that, in, that contain rhythm and repetition. So what we know about human beings is that we are hardwired for rhythm. As, um, as human beings, we are first exposed to rhythm in utero before we are even born. We are exposed to rhythm from uh, the mother's heartbeat, from the mother's voice that we hear in utero, and sometimes from the voices of other people around the mother. Um, and that's one of the things that um, children enjoy that is entertaining for them when reading children's literature. The same thing is true with repetition. They're also hardwired for repetition because they hear that uh, repetition of the heartbeat. So if we think about um, if we think about young children and especially how we talk to them, think about the kinds of things that we say. We don't say goodbye to children. We say bye bye. We don't say good night. We say night night. Um, when we teach them um, to talk to us or to say our names, we say mama, dada. Um, that's that's so we're they hear that repetition and that rhythm early on. So if we think about literature for children that has rhythm and repetition, think about books of nursery rhymes and poetry. Think about picture books like Good Night Moon um, that are filled with repetition. Kids look for that rhythm and repetition. So with, or with young children, we want to incorporate as much of that as possible. Another way in which we can um, tap into that idea of literature and entertainment is by using books that are called participation books. These are books that the reader um, can manipulate. So some examples are Pat the Bunny by Dorothy Kuhnhart, which I'll show you all in class, but many of you may have seen before. It's kind of a classic gift to give new mothers at their baby showers. But with Pat the Bunny, um, readers can feel the dad's whiskers. They can look in the mirror in the book. They can put their finger in the hole in the book that is the die cut for the mommy's ring. Um, Where's Spot by Eric Hill. I am guessing that many of you are familiar with this book. Um, it is now kind of a classic book. It's a lift the flap book. So this little puppy named Spot is, um, is it featured in the book and the mommy is looking for him and she looks under the rug and inside the closet um, and behind the curtain. And each time she looks for Spot somewhere, the reader gets to lift the flap to see. Another great example, this is for kids who are a little older, is a book called The Secret Birthday Message by Eric Carle. And this is a book that is written as a rebus. So what that means, a rebus is a, is a piece of text or a story where every so often a picture is used instead of a word. Um, that's a rebus. And so this is all about um, a little boy's secret birthday surprise. But the kids have to um, think about um, the rebus to try and figure out what those pictures mean in the book and then as you pass that introduction they start to see whether or not their predictions were correct. So those are some examples of books that kids can manipulate and participate with. I'm going to move the video up here a little bit so you can see um, letter C. So letter C, this is all uh, about um, helping kids play with language. Uh, we tend to beat out of our students the idea that uh, language is actually fun, but many of us love to play with language. We like puns, we like spoonerisms, um, we like multiple meaning words. We want to ingrain in our kids early on and then continue that all the way up through middle school and high school that playing with language is a fun thing. 
Um, some great examples of children's literature that do this are the Amelia Bedelia books by Peggy Parrish. Again, I'll show these to you in class, but Amelia Bedelia is a um, housekeeper who she takes things very literally. So when her boss tells her, leaves her notes about different things she needs to do, that's where the humor comes in. Amelia doesn't always get it just right. Um, A Chocolate Mousse for Dinner by Fred Gwynn. He played Herman Munster in The Munsters, but he wrote um, three or four books for children that are all about homophones and multiple meaning words. So if you look at the title, A Chocolate Mousse for Dinner, generally when we think about moose that you eat, it's spelled M-O-U-S-S-E. So if you think about kids hearing that, oh, I'm going to have a chocolate mousse for dinner, they're thinking about moose, the animal not moose, the chocolate pudding. So these are fun uh, for kids of all ages and especially useful for some of our English language learners. And then C to B and C to C by William Stieg. It's hard to, it's hard to grasp um, the impact of these books until you actually see them and I will show them to you in class. Uh, but what I would like for you to do before we pass them around in class is to look up the game Mad Gab. Um, on the internet and see if you can see how Mad Gab works. That'll give you a little hint into how C to B and C to C work. Fun books by an author named William Stieg, who is also the author of the picture book Shrek, which was turned into a movie. So literature and entertainment. We really want to instill in our students the idea that literature and reading are fun endeavors, that they are entertaining and worthy of our time. Another reason or purpose for sharing children's literature is to help our students understand that literature can open up for them a lot of options for human, for human beings. So what we know is that um, stories can show children how to solve problems because every children's book that is a story or is a narrative has a lesson in problem solving. All that means is that um, stories follow typical narrative text structure. So you have probably seen before a diagram that looks something like this. You've probably seen this in an English class. Looks like that. Um, and it's been called the um, story arc, the plot mountain, all kinds of things. But what we know about that, that, that it's actually called Freytag's Pyramid, F-R-E-Y-T-A-G. What we know about Freytag's Pyramid is that in every narrative there is a problem and there is a resolution. Um, which is what we mean when we say every lesson, every story has a, a lesson in problem solving because there's always going to be a problem and a re resolution. There's always a character and a conflict. So what this does, if, if you think about children, they kind of wear binders. They kind of have tunnel vision and they think that nobody else has the same kinds of problems they do. But as they are exposed to literature, they start to see that everybody deals with problems um, and it helps them remove those blinders or get rid of that tunnel vision. A third reason or purpose for sharing children's literature is to help our students be able to empathize. Empathy is much stronger than sympathy. Sympathy is merely feeling sorry for someone, whereas empathy is really understanding what they're going through, having walked in those shows before. This is a reason um, that we are drawn and have favorite, drawn to and have favorite movies and books. It's because we were that character for a brief period in our life. Um, and, and so we can empathize with the character. A great example of a book that allows children to empathize is a book called Peter's Chair by Ezra Jack Keats, which I'll share with you in class. But Peter's Chair is a classic story about a little boy who is disgruntled because he has a new baby sister. Um, and lots of the things that were his, like his special chair um, and uh, some, some other things that were his, are now becoming the, the uh, possessions of his little sister. So for example, the chair, the parents are going to take, take and paint pink for the little sister. And he's really struggling um, with feelings of jealousy about that new little sister. Lots of kids um, can listen to that book 
and empathize with Peter because they felt those same things. And finally, a, a final reason for sharing children's literature with kids is to provide them with vicarious ex experiences. So what we know is that reading and books can take us places. Um, and we also know, and this is, uh, this is true every time we have a legislative session, um, is that a lot of times uh, budgets in schools and in school districts are cut. Um, and that takes, when, when those budgets are cut, some of the things that are taken away are funding for field trips or funding for um, classes in the arts. And books can sometimes help supplement that. Uh, so when I was a child, we had um, the opportunity every year to be taken down to Fair Park in Dallas. And sometimes we went to a museum, sometimes we went to the opera, um, but many times these days, those experiences are taken away. So by sharing children's literature, you can help bring some of those experiences back because books take us places. So there's four different reasons um, for sharing children's literature with our students. And remember, this is true in grades K through 12. Um, so take note of these and know that I will be sharing these books with you when I see you in class.